Hey there folks, got another video for you this time, the Shackle and Bayonet vlog, an update I, uh, desperate need of doing, it's been a while, I don't think I put one up for my Napoleonics in at least a couple years, uh, that's mainly due to the fact that I've taken a break from Napoleonics, as I focus on some other things in life, not just in the hobby, but here we are, finally at last. Of course, this is my favorite set of rules currently, and I think that'll remain the case for some time. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I posted a video on this particular set of rules, General de Brigade, uh, earlier, uh, I think it was last week, actually. I'll put a link to that in the description so you can check it out, I'll give you a flip-through review of sorts, a little discussion on it, my take on these rules. So I won't go into too much detail here with that. But this is my main set of rules, and I'll continue to be doing that. And I hope um, next year, hopefully, I'll be putting on some games for you to watch and enjoy. Depends on how I get along with my next project, which I will get into in a moment. Of course, other rules is General Darme. This also, by the same author, incidentally, is another favorite of mine. I enjoy some of the unique mechanics this game offers. And also, I did plenty of videos for this, and you can watch some a demonstration game I put on of this, uh, showing a couple turns of a Russian versus French action. Uh, but yeah, this is another one of my favorites, and it's basically the same level of command, really, although this would let you play with bigger units, more units on the table. Uh, but what I like about this the most is just the uniqueness of the gameplay. Uh, it's very fun. Very entertaining game. So this as well is right up there, but of course General the Brigade is still my all-time favorite. So I anticipate putting on more battles with these rules. Now, that said, one of the great things about Napoleonics is an abundance of quality rules. And it's been an absolute joy since I got into Napoleonics, exploring uh, all the different options of rules that are out there. And there is one set of rules, and I'm going to show that here. I've never done anything for, and I'm not sure if this was a letdown or not. It's a very unique set of rules. This was originally produced by Avalon Hill back in the day, I think in the 90s. Uh, this, of course, is the fourth edition uh, published by the author, authors themselves at this point. I'm not sure who publishes it, but I did give this shot. There's the original authors. Uh, classic miniatures games. Hmm. But uh, of course Partisan Press over in the UK. Uh, and Caliber Books. I did give this somewhat of a test. I played it and there were certain elements I didn't like. I didn't uh, didn't catch with me. Basically, the way close combats were done and how shooting between battalions of troops was handled uh, was kind of odd and unusual to me. But that, but you know what? I haven't really given it a chance. And being the classic that this game is, or so it's said, I'm probably going to give this another chance, another shot in the future. So I have yet to do an actual review of this game, so it would only be fair to do that. Uh, it's not a cheap book. But yeah, so I am going to do that. And I also have, let me grab it, this set of rules as well, Over the Hills, Napoleonic War Games. See, I think you can see right away there's just a lot of rules for Napoleonics to explore. I have not checked these out yet. And I know there's a, quite a fan base for this. And I think there's a lot of similarity when it comes to comparing it to something like uh, General Darme or General the Brigade. Uh, some people love this. I've never actually played this. I, I read it just a little bit, and I do want to actually test this out as well. So as you can see, folks, I think the point I'm trying to make is there's still rules I want to explore with you guys. And of course, I'll make videos on these. But... To date, and so far, General de Brigade is my all-time favorite, and I don't, I don't think that's going to change. But, uh, as is the case with my Ancients wargaming hobby and my World War II wargaming hobby, there's such an abundance of quality rules that there's room on my shelf for all these sets. Uh, for the occasional change of pace, if you will. 
So I think that's where probably these sets of rules will fall. Uh, right alongside uh, the Blue Shear game system. But yeah. So expect some content on these sets of rules in the future. Next year, maybe. We shall see. But uh, yeah, that's part of the hobby, right? Exploring things. So rules-wise, that's where I set. And again, folks, check out my video on this uh, as well as this. And I'll post some links in the description, as usual. Uh, I should talk a little bit about my actual miniatures and where I set regarding that. Uh, many of you know I've, I've been a big fan of 10 millimeter scale war games, and especially for Napoleonics. And getting that realistic look is not difficult in this scale. And, however, that said, I'm kind of moving on. Well, I'm definitely moving on at this point to the much bigger fellows. As you can see here, let me zoom in instead of bringing it up to the camera where there's not as much light. In fact, let me bring over some light. See what happens here, so you guys can see. These are blue moons, 18 mil. Uh, beautiful figures, and they'll sit alongside your A, B figures uh, quite well. And this is where I'm heading with my Napoleonics at this point. I'm going back to a larger scale. Thought about 28s because I love painting 28s so much, but uh. Storage space is a huge issue, so I'm not going to go that route. Uh, 20 mil, not really interested in that for this period. Uh, 6 mil and 10 mil. 10 mil is wonderful, as I said, but I'd never go smaller than that. And I just plain miss the detail of the bigger figures. This has always been my favorite scale, the ideal scale for Napoleonics. For me, I know everybody's different. But for me, it's always been this. I, I like to see the details of the uniforms while I'm playing the game. I don't want to have to crouch so low on the table, and, you know, to be able to see these things. Uh, so this is an ideal scale for me. And again, these are Blue Moons, and this is a Prussian Landwehr regiment I'm working on for my current project. I didn't buy too many figures for this. I just bought a blister of, uh, well, a bag of French and a bag of Landwehr for the Prussians. And we'll see how I get along with that. I'm not one to just buy a ton of stuff at once. Just what I need just to get done. That way I've got leeway and I can change my project as I need. It's not focusing well. So, yeah. This is where they set. I haven't touched these in quite a while. These, again, are for my personal project for Napoleonics. I'm moving on to 15 slash 18 mil. And I intend to expand on this scale uh, with AB miniatures. And what was the other one? Uh, Blue Moon, of course. Old Glory 15s, which I'm not a fan of. They're not the best looking figures, but they do cater to a lot of unique units, a lot of variety. Um, so I think that's what I'll be using Old Glory 15 millimeter for, if I need them. Uh, what else? I think those are the three main scales I'm going to look at. And of course, you guys, if you have any uh, recommendations for uh, 18 mil scale Napoleonics, uh, let me know. Put them in the links below, or the description below. The comments below, I should say. Wow. And I'll be sure to check them out. But, yeah, that's what I'm doing with my figures at the moment. And I don't have those other figures handy, just those. So I'll show them off in a later video. But moving on here with my update, I probably should get into what exactly my plans are at the moment for painting and playing games. And, of course, these are scenario books you can get for General Brigade. Now, with my 10 millimeter project that I did a few years ago, my focus was on 1812, the invasion of Russia. Uh, like, you know, why not? You know, that's the ideal period uh, for me. 
you know, dealing with the Russian army, which I think is a fantastic army, uh, from 1812 on. And the invasion of Russia is a fantastic topic and so many possibilities for battles. So my focus has been on that. And with General de Brigade, I've basically been mostly interested in these two scenario books, 6 and 7, which deal with basically the later period of the empire, Napoleonic era. And mainly because my next project, which is 18 mil, as I mentioned, is going to be the 1813 period. Uh, well, 1813 and 1814. I really don't have much interest in 1815 and the 100 days. I don't know, it just does not uh, appeal to me so much. Uh, the Peninsular campaigns don't really appeal either. Uh, as well as the earlier portions of the Napoleonic Wars. Well, they, they do. Overall, I really love the, the history. But as far as collecting and playing, I think the later period, from 1812 on, is what most fascinates and interests me. And my next stage in my hobby is going to be 1813 and 14, And that's always been my intention, even when I got into the 10 millimeter project. So what I decided is that for this 18 millimeter project, I'm going to focus my collections and my game sessions on the 1813 and 14 period. And as a start, I'm looking at the Battle of Leipzig. And this is a battle which is fascinating. This massive engagement that lasted days. Uh, what I've done, going through some of these scenario books, and you know what, I'm going to make a video separate about my uh, actual scenario that I'm building up my collections for. But it's based on this, the Battle of Delitz, Leipzig, 1813. Uh, I'm not doing the entire scenario, but this is a starting point for me. And I believe, if I remember correctly, my focus is over here on the right flank. And the French are on this side, deployed in this area here. and The Allies are up here on the high ground. And the other half of this battle, the scenario, is a separate engagement. And I'm, I'm going to focus my, my first scenario and collecting and the orders of battle and so on on this area. Now, if you don't know about the Battle of Delitz, go ahead and look it up. This is a part of the Battle of Leipzig. Uh, in fact, just look up the Battle of Leipzig, and that would be a good start. And there is a nice order of battle here for the French and the Allies. And I'm trying to remember the, the guys that were involved here. I think, I think it was the 9th Corps that was engaged on this flank. I'm not sure. And for the Allies, I pretty much remember this under Barclay. Uh, this was the order of battle, the guys that had the high ground. I could be wrong, but I think this is the, the force that was deployed on that high ground. And it's a nice mix of uh, Prussians, as you can see here. And as well as some Russians. We've got some Cossacks in here. So, little Russia Kirassier. There's a lot of cool units here to put together. And this is what I've been building my collection for. Like the Landwehr that I just showed you are somewhere in this mix. Like there's the 9th and the 10th uh, and so on. So, this is what I'm aiming to do. This is where I'm focused. And if you have the scenario book, you can look this up. The scenario and we'll see where I go from that point on once I reach a point where I can fight this part of the Battle of the Litz uh, I might do the entire battle who knows but it's a starting point so yeah it's gonna be focused in this area right here so yeah I'll make some more videos about this and uh, kudos to my friend Paul Alba I think he has pictures of his miniatures in here or is it this one I'm not sure. He is mentioned in the books. Once again, congrats, my friend. Uh, more inspiration. So that's where I'm looking uh, as far as collecting my figures uh, and the scenarios you can anticipate seeing. And of course, off and on. Now, I haven't cracked these books in a while, but man, I highly recommend these. These were recommended to me by Paul Alba, who I just mentioned. And this, I've read some of it. And I'm still working my way through them. This is volume one, I believe. Is it not? Yeah, volume one. 
and it's basically what it says the franco-prussian war of 1813 this is a great book a great series if you want to know the history and what's going on behind the campaigns uh, of 1813 uh, primarily dealing with the prussians this is a great book and of course there's lots of maps uh, and there's a second volume which is humongous and i believe this is where the gritty stuff is the actual fighting and battles Just look at that goodness. Books like this can help you not only get the right feel for what you're doing, but uh, generate some interesting scenarios in their own right, uh, as well as maybe a campaign system. So yeah, there you go, folks. That's pretty much what I'm up to uh, and what you can expect. Now, the thing is, uh, I've got my Ancients hobby, got my World War II hobby, and I've got my Napoleonics hobby, as far as miniatures gaming is concerned. And currently, I'm working on my Ancients project. Uh, and World War II and Napoleonics, I don't know exactly where they're going to fit into my scheduling. But I can say that next year, hopefully early to mid next year, I should be uh, digging deep into this. I'm probably going to be collecting miniatures for this, building up my uh, projects of unpainted figures basically and sometime next year i'm going to start getting into this wholeheartedly and painting up stuff and getting this project well underway so hopefully by the end of next year this time next year you know i'll have something to really uh put on i might have this project done who knows but that's where it sets uh like I said, my main focus is on Ancients currently, and that'll run up to the end of this year. And then going into next year, I'm looking at either jumping into my 20mm World War II project or the Napoleonics. Really not sure where it's going to set. What do you guys think? Do you want to see this early next year? Let me see me get some more figures on the table and get some painting in. Let me know. I'd like to see what you guys like to see. Uh, but we'll see. You know, these are my three projects, and this project for Napoleonics is very important to me. I really love Napoleonics, and it's been a while for me. And once I get through the end of this year, we'll see where this sets in the scheduling department. Yeah. That busy. So there we go, folks. That's my update to the Shackle and Bayonet blog. I hope to get into this soon. And put on some more great videos for you guys. You guys let me know what you think. Give me a... Uh, if you got any uh, recommendations for other lines of figures that go along with AB and Blue Moons, let me know. Uh, tell me your thoughts on this. What's your favorite scale of game in? I mean, I, I did 10 mil, considered 28, and decided to go back to my my what I'm most interested in, which is 18 mil. What do you guys think about that? I think for the battles, I think it'll show up better. Uh, than the 10 mil, obviously. So that's a plus. So, yeah. Another thing I'll throw out there, I'm looking for board games of a strategic, primarily strategic level uh, to add to my collections and place some games on the table with my board games. Because as of right now, I don't have any. I have absolutely no Napoleonic uh, board games. And if somebody's in a no out there, give me some recommendations of that, too. It's It could be a strategic. That seems to be hard to find for some reason. Or it could be a, a battle, tactical battle game, like SPQR is with Ancients, or Great Battles of the American Civil War, for instance. It could be like along those lines as well. Uh, I'm curious what's out there and what I would be interested in. Because like I said, board gaming to me, it's not only fun because it's a, a game in its own right, and I love my board games because of the solo uh, aspects to it, being able to do that. But it also generates um, scenarios for my miniatures gaming, uh, maybe even mini campaigns, you know. So I just haven't been able to find any, and it's unfortunate. When I do find them, they usually deal with a period I'm not as interested in, like uh, the 100 days, for instance. <laughs> so, yeah. And also, I'm not a big fan of blocks. As some of you might know. So the block games are kind of out of the question. And you guys probably know what I'm talking about when I say blocks. Because there is 
few games on Napoleonics that use blocks. So, yeah. All right, folks, this is running on and on here. This is my update to the shotgun bayonet vlog, what I'm doing, what to expect. Uh, you'll probably see more videos in my vlog updating on my updating things as regarding my scenario and anything I've collected on the way. And if I do get some painting in uh, before next year, even uh, I'm going to share that with you guys on here as well. Um, and I'll get, update you on the timeline when I'm going to get into this in earnest and when you can expect some goodness. Some battles. I can't wait, actually. Beautiful figures. Okay, folks, you take care. I'll be back soon, I am sure, with another update. Hang in there, folks. It's only going to get better. You know it. Take care.